Hello guys, welcome to the new video lesson on language and linguistics. In the previous video lessons, we have seen the definition, the introduction to linguistics, what linguistics is all about. It is in fact a scientific study of language. We have seen different semioticians, linguists, philologists, the pioneers and their contributions to language and linguistics. We have also seen Ferdinand de Saussure, the father of modern linguistics and his considerable massive landmark contribution to the domain of linguistics. We have also seen and gone through the various branches of linguistics and how it has been divided and categorized into different various and diverse uh, realms and branches like applied linguistics, theoretical linguistics, and so on. In this video lesson, we shall have a look at Ferdinand de Saussure and his foundational work, uh, his uh, contributions to the, uh, his, his contribution to <clears throat> the domain, the field of language and linguistics his theory of science and what he defines as semiotics, what you mean by semiotics and what you mean by semiology. Partly, we shall also have a look at Charles Sanders Peirce, another, uh, another founder, another co-partner or another person, another important, significant figure in the development and advanced advancement and progression of uh, linguistics along with Ferdinand de Saussure. So we shall have a look at both uh, what do you mean by semiotics as well as semiology, the theory of sign and what a sign is and Saussure and peers and their contributions to language and linguistics. Saussure, he was a Swiss linguist as you can see uh, from 1875 to that of 1913. He was a semiotician and he was a philosopher. His uh, ideas laid a foundation for many significant developments in both linguistics and semiology in the 20th century. He is widely considered one of the founders of 20th century linguistics and one of the two major founders together with Charles Sanders Peirce of semiotics or semiology. So you can, of course, attribute or associate Ferdinand de Saussure with semiotics and uh, you can associate Charles Sanders Peirce. You'll see him in the upcoming sessions. Uh, you can connect or associate Charles Sanders Peirce with semiology. Both are almost same. They resemble. At the same time, they have a very minute distinction. Now, the foundational work, the landmark, and the phenomenal work of uh, Ferdinand de Saussure is, of course, uh, the key work, Cause in General Linguistics. Okay, and Saussure, he had a major impact on the development of linguistic theory in the first half of the 20th century with his notions, with his ideas becoming incorporated in the central tenets of structural linguistics. Now, there are so many contributions by Ferdinand Saussure, uh, so many concepts and so many terms that you are going to be uh, acquainted with in this video lesson and the upcoming sessions. So, Please focus or emphasize on the key work and the phenomenal work by Ferdinand de Saussure that is course in general linguistics. You can see here two terms, synchronic and diachronic approaches to the study of the language. In the previous video lesson, I've already mentioned to you about the distinctions, the levels of distinctions made uh, in the field or in, uh, in the different branches of linguistics. And I have told you that I'm skipping uh, one particular dis uh, distinction that is between uh, synchronic and diachronic, which you will uh, acquaint with in the upcoming or the uh, forthcoming video lessons. So, cause in general linguistics or cause the linguistic generale. It is, in fact, a most influential work which was published posthumously in 1916. So, this was uh, published not when Saussure was uh, alive, 
it was posthumously published by his former students and uh, his students they did it on the basis of uh, so many notes and lectures taken from sosur's talks and lectures in geneva so he has uh, in fact delivered so many lectures and seminars and talks related to his theory of science and his semiotics what he defined the scientific study of science as uh, such so his students they compiled this and together they published this work called uh, course in general linguistics the course became one of the seminal linguistics works of the 20th century not primarily for the content but for the innovative approach so he delineated a very uh, phenomenal kind of uh, approaches i told you in the previous lesson to this these two uh, terms synchronic and diachronic they are not actually branches they are two levels or two kinds two types of forms of approaches uh, in discussing linguistic phenomena so here again i'm sharing you uh many slides various slides which is uh, related to sosur and his phenomenal works and his contribution again you can see who sosur is a key figure in the development of modern approaches to language uh, study and um, his uh, first and foremost important uh, uh, work or his contribution is that of his theory of sign which you call as semiotics and uh, literature may be understood according to susur uh, literature and language can be or language of course in the first place can be understood or defined and described as a part of a system of signs language is a system is a process of signs symbols okay and uh, so sosur studied language as a synchronic system rather than a diachronic phenomenon so in uh, the um, during the uh, course of this lesson you will come across what synchronic and diachronic is all about and he also coined certain terms called lang and perron so one thing you need to keep in mind is that his major contribution is his theory of sign again according to sosur a uh, language is a system of sign so a word language is full of words isn't it we have so many sound units we have a uh, phonetic uh, units phonemes we have morphemes we have words we have syntax we have uh, statements sentences etc etc so what is a sign according to Ferdinand de Saussure a sign is in fact so here this is actually the way we are gradually moving on to the theory of sign by Ferdinand de Saussure now what is a sign a sign is made up of or it constitutes two parts or two components the signified and the signifier uh, the signified and the signifier together joins and compiles and unites and blends they make up a sign again you have a uh, one more slide share which delineates which talks about uh, the swiss linguist sosur and his uh, the same thing it's the same thing who he is his uh, modern structuralism etc etc so you can go through these uh, slides and just sharing you the same thing the same topic yes now here we can see an overview i shall share the same thing at the end of uh, a couple of video lessons you can see because it gives you an overall view of uh, what a sign system or a sign theory in semiotics is all about semiotics exactly means the study of signs just like what is linguistics you say that it's a scientific study of language likewise semiotics is a scientific study of signs it deals with or it uh, consists of both the theory and analysis of signs and the signifying practices you can see sosur and you can see charles sanders peirce he was in fact an american philosopher and he formulated a semiotic theory along with the sosur and peirce stated semiotics to be a relationship but we so according to him 
there are three kinds. So just keep in mind one thing. While Ferdinand de Saussure talks everything in a dyadic way, dyadic means binary, two, twofold. For him, everything is twofold. For Charles Sanders Pierce, it is everything in threefold. He talks about things in three components. Just keep in mind, Saussure always supports or favors. For him, everything is dyadic or binary or dual. And for Charles Sanders Pierce, everything is threefold. So, when Saussure defines a sign as composed of the signifier and the signified, Charles Sanders Pierce, he goes for another take that is, according to him, a language is full of icons, symbols, and indexes. You can see the definition the visual representation of all these things in this particular slide. So what do you mean by the signified and the signifier? According, I repeat, according to Sosor, we shall come back to this slide again towards the end of the lesson. According to Charles Sanders Pierce, there are three types of signs. Icon, index and symbol. You can see that. Icon is exactly a sign which physically resembles what it stands for. It's a literal sign. You can see a cat there. What do you mean by that? It's of course a cat. It's an animal, right? So the cat, if you see cat, the photograph or the image of a cat means it's a cat. Physically, you can look at it and you see the form, the structure, the shape, the look and the appearance, the visual of a cat. You can see another image, another sign below the cat. It shows uh, the paw, the design, uh, the design made by a cat's paw, isn't it? And then you can see another image down. It shows C-A-T and that is also cat. So you can see three types of signs. When you write C-A-T, it's a sign with a conventional or an arbitrary relation to the signified. It's a learned sign. Does C-A-T look like a cat? I repeat, does C-A-T look like a cat? No. You know that there are three alphabets, C, A and T. You know that they are three phonetic symbols or sounds. K, A, T, right? And you pronounce it as cat. But does that mean a small, gentle animal, a furry, uh, a, a pod, a paws with four legs, with a tail, a furry friend with whiskers, always mewing, mewing and all? Do you mean, uh, do you mean if you write C-A-T, who told you that it means a cat, that animal? You know, we are attributing it. So that is what we mean by a symbol. C-A-T is a symbol which imparts into you a signify, uh, it, it signifies an animal and you have attributed by convention, by habit, you have learned that, you have learned this sign C-A-T as the animal with four legs and a tail and a few whiskers. Okay, and the second image, the second image you can see, it's, an, it's a sign which shows or which implies you infer that, oh, here somewhere a cat has moved around. You can see the, 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 the design which is made by its paw. Your furry friend has made a, has marked the paw on the soil or on this uh, surface. It is an implied sign, which is an index. So these are the three types of signs. Uh, I repeat, icon, index and symbol. Icon physically tells you it's a literal thing. That thing is that. Index implies or gives you information. For example, you see smoke and then you understand that. Oh, here somewhere around there was a fire. Okay. And symbol means something which is written. You write F-I-R-E, fire, of course. When you see the fire, physically, you can see the fire. That is, of course, an icon. 
But when you write if I R E fire, it is of course a symbol. It doesn't look like the flames of a fire. It just shows four alphabet letters of the English alphabet. But you know that it reads fire, and fire means something uh, which creates a lot of smoke and something which burns, uh, which is very hot, etc., etc. Who told you that? It is a learned sign. A true habitual uh, social conventions you have learned it that if you write f i r e it means fire and fire is that again you can have uh, examples of uh, icon index and symbol just have a look at it and understand just try to recollect what i have explained right now what an icon is cycle or bicycle it looks like a bicycle, of course. This is an index. It implies what? Danger. And here you have a symbol which you have uh, uh, habitualized by daily usage or by convention. Again, the concept of fire. The last is actually a symbol of fire which medieval alchemists they use. It is, of course, a conventional notation, you know. Actually, you see the real flames of a fire and you see the destruction. And the second is again uh, uh, an index. The first one is an icon. The second one is an index where you see the smoke. So the sound, the temperature, the smell, all these things will work. It implies that somewhere around fire is there. And then you can see a symbol, which is also a very old medieval kind of notation or mark that shows fire. Again, the physical relationship, man, woman, male, female. Here goes the icon where you can see the physical resemblance between the signifier and the signifier. I shall explain what signifier and signified very uh, in a detailed way, very elaborately. We shall have discussions on the signifier and the signified. We have just uh, abruptly stopped. So Sosur and his dual, his binary relationship of uh, the components of a sign. We are talking about Charles Sanders Pierce, three types of signs, icon, index and symbol. I think you're, uh, you can read and find out, you can understand. It is very uh, obviously and clearly uh, portrayed here on the slide what is the relationship between a signifier and the signified in icon, in index, and symbol. You understand physically, you understand the implication, you understand the convention. Okay. So we have uh, seen Charles Sanders Pierce and his three types of signs. Now we are moving on to Ferdinand de Saussure. We have stopped there in between where he talks about the signifier and the signified. Every sign contains two important parts, a signifier and the signified. A sign is made up of a signifier and a signified. Be careful, it is a signifier and a signified. Please don't confuse these two terms. It is important. Here you have an example, ropes, R-O-S-E, and the visual, the image of a rose, and a word, passion. What is a signifier? The image or sound that gives a meaning. That is your signifier. When I say rose, the spelling R-O-S-E, the word that you hear, the word that you write is a rose. That is your signifier. It gives you an image or it gives you a sound. You hear it. Okay. And what is the signified? Signified is the implication. The idea, the message, the meaning or concept that this sign refers to you. For example, I tell you blue color. When I tell you blue color, you hear the word blue color. You hear my voice, blue color. When I tell you rose, you hear the word rose. You hear my voice. And that voice or if I write R-O-S-E, that image is your signifier. I'm repeating it again. When I say rose, you hear the word rose. That is your signifier. 
When I write R-O-S-E, you see the word rose. That is your signifier because it gives you the image or the word, the visual of a rose. And you hear the word. It gives you a voice. And that is your signifier. When I tell you blue color or when I tell you rose, what all feelings or emotions or what all ideas and concepts develop or is created or is triggered in your mind? That is your signified. When I tell you rose, you may be thinking about a color. You may be thinking about, uh, what do you say? Mm, you may be thinking about a red color. You may be thinking about romance. You may be thinking about passion, love, blood, revolution. Or you may be just thinking about a rose color. Or a fragrance. Or you may be thinking about thorns. You may be thinking about she, she looks like a rose. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's pretty. So many uh, connotations come to your minds, isn't it? So all these things are your signified these are the signified meanings or concepts into your mind. Blue color, when I tell you, of course, you just think about a blue color. No, when you say that, he is all blue and black in color. That means he is sad, he is in his blue. Yeah, that means blue color is often associated with uh, sadness or sometimes the sea. So many things, when I, uh, so when, when words or when signs are being said, spoken or written or seen what you see first or what you hear first is your signifier when i say linguistics okay the word comes to your mind or the word you hear that is your signifier and then you think about it oh it's a very tough subject it talks about language it talks about phonemes it talks about morphemes Ferdinand de Saussure and science and theory so many concepts and meanings come to your mind right so that is the signified, what is being implied or imparted into you. I hope signifier and signify is clear. Again, you have a lot, many uh, real life experience, I mean, examples, and uh, you have lots of uh, real life experiences of signs and signified here. You can see a concept of a tree. When I say tree, the word tree or the picture of a tree, the pronunciation of tree, all these are your signifiers. And the image, tree, uh, wood, wood and stuff. Of course, that's your concept. That is your signified. Again, see, cat. The, signif the signifier is the form that you see. You see a real life uh, cat and that is your cat. That is your signifier. And the concept of a cat, an animal, and you may be thinking about a kitten, you may be thinking about a bigger cat, you may be thinking about so many cats, you may be thinking about pets, domestic animals, etc., etc., all these things. Yeah, of course. All these are your signifiers. So just keep in mind, so these are simpler versions of uh, definitions of a signified and signifier. A signifier is a form. Keep that in mind. Signified is the concept. What you hear, what you see, what you write first, all these are your form. The form you see, the form you hear, the form you write, that is your signifier. What all things come to your mind, what all ideas, meanings and concepts come to your mind, all these are your signified. Okay. So here, you can zoom uh, and find out for an end ESO source theory of science. I'm just giving this slide. Of course, uh, he is the semiotician who studied even Sanskrit and comparative linguistics in Geneva, Paris, and Leipzig. And he focuses on the patterns and functions of language. And he was well known for his lectures at Geneva, which was later on compiled by his uh, students in the course in gentle linguistics and we have uh, certain other points and important details on that and moving on to the next slide yes again another way of uh, representing Sosu's theory semiotics of course is the scientific study of science and Sosu's 
theory of linguistic science. For him, everything is twofold, binary and dyadic. For Charles Sanders Pierce, his co-partner, the the uh, he, he, another one of the two founders of uh, semiotics and semiology. For him, it is threefold. So source sign consists of signified and signifier. Of course, signifier is the form, and signified is the concept or meaning. Okay, and those two words are written in French too. Of course, he's a Swiss linguist, and all his uh, the uh, contributions and everything documented was in French, and this was later on translated. So, signified and signifier, they are both linked with each other. They are interconnected, they are interlinked, and they triggers each other. They are mutually very much associated, very close. This is a very common, very familiar, very interesting example for the sign system. When you see this M, of course, anyone, anyone can understand that it uh, refers to the McDonald's. Yeah, so this is in fact the signifier. I'm loving it. That things that give this meaning or the word or image. You don't know. This is just a, a, just an alphabet, M. It It is a mental concept which is evoked in the mind. And together, they give you the idea that McDonald's, which I love very much, which refers to the roasted chicken front. So anything that conveys meaning, that is sign. You have a definition of sign here. Anything that conveys meaning to you, maybe a form, maybe a sign, maybe a concept or whatever. So a sign to be meaningful, a sign to be proper, you should have both the signifier and signified, of course. They won't uh, stay alone. They won't stand alone. They cannot afford to stand alone. There cannot be a signified alone. There cannot be a signifier alone. Both together play equal share, equal parts. They are equally important as far as a sign is concerned. And a sign is important as far as language is concerned. So, again, you can see the, 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 the connection, the relationship between uh, signifier and signified. What signified is the concept and the signifier is the sound image. They together contribute to what you call as sign. So, so uh, according to him, this relation is being essentially arbitrary. What do you mean by arbitrary? It is accidental. It may change accordingly. You can't say a very strict, uh, you can't be specific about that. You can't say that it is, a, uh, it is very strictly followed. It may change. It can change because language is changing, you know, it's evolving. Language never uh, becomes language is always becoming and language is of course fluid you know it changes it uh, the uh, Saussure's concept according to Saussure's concept the sign relation is of course dyadic and there you have the form of the sign and its meaning this form of a sign the look of a sign the appearance of a sign is of course a signifier and the concept of the meaning which is imparted to the listener or the reader is of course the signified so this actually may change you know the relationship between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary it's motivated by the social convention and his theory has been influential a lot in the study of linguistic science so uh, all these are social conventions you know so here we have uh, looked at so source contribution to modern structural linguistics, his foundational work and uh, his theory of science. We have uh, met Charles Sanders Pierce, the American linguist, and both of them contributed a lot uh, into the development, advancement and uh, proliferation of the great uh, vast and uh, what do you say, a bit sophisticated and complex uh, domain of language and linguistics. We have seen what a sign is 
for I, I repeat again for Sosur, everything is twofold, binary and diary. And for Charles Sanders Pierce, he talks about, he defines things in the threefold. Uh, the sign system, the sign, the, sign, the two parts of a sign, signified and signifier, belongs to Sosur, whereas three types of signs, the icon, index and symbol, belongs to Charles Sanders Pierce. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video lesson.